welcome to day seven of the 12 days of Christmas with Katie and Angie. Today I have a cute little gnome card to share with you because the Christmas this year is all about those gnomes. And it's going to feature using an embossing folder, a diffuser, and we'll have a nice little gift card holder on the inside. Let's take a look at how we can make this. Here's a quick sneak peek at the card we'll be creating. And I'm going to be starting with the Banners and Sprigs stamp set by Melissa Esplin. I'm stamping off one of the banners and I'm actually going to make it into a sled. Then I'm going to take a stamp from the Garden Gnomes Stamps and Thin Cuts and I'm going to stamp him off and we will be coloring these images later and I will be cutting them out as well. Luckily this one has a thin cut with it. Next I'm using stamps from the Jingle Joy card making workshop stamps and thin cuts. I'm stamping off the presents in Candy Apple and I even stamp another one off in Clover in just a minute. These are darling little presents, and those are the ones that you saw piled up on the little sled that the gnome is pulling behind him. I must admit, I'm not really a huge gnome fan, but ever since I've seen these gnomes made into little Santa Clauses, I have absolutely fell in love with them. Okay, next I'm getting started with the Cascading Dots embossing folder and I'm using the Circle Diffuser. That Circle Diffuser is still available right now on my website, kd.ctmh.com, and I think it's only $3.50. What's going to happen is where I put this diffuser over the embossing folder, it will not emboss where you see that circle cut out. There's no pressure there, so you don't get an embossed image at that point. Um, it's a great little area that you can then stamp in and it doesn't have the bumps from whatever your embossing folder is. So I just love using a diffuser and I still get that fun embossed background, but I have a nice area where I can stamp. Now you'll notice on this one, there was a little bit of cracking. We have white core cardstock, which is wonderful, but sometimes you get a little bit of cracking. So here you'll see I'm misting the next piece and putting it through. And when I do that, I don't have any cracking at all. Now the cracking honestly won't matter for the card that we're making today, but I wanted to show you that little trick. If you spritz your cardstock, it actually allows the fibers to stretch a little. Okay, next I'm going to stamp a sentiment using Versamark ink, and then I'm going to use my white embossing powder, and I'm going to heat emboss it. So um, this just makes that stamp really stand out against the dark background. Um, I always do two of everything, so that's why you see me working on a second one. And I've just layered that on the front of my um, card. And I'm kind of playing here, deciding about the hills that I'm going to add on. These hills were cut from the Fancy Borders Thin Cut. And I layered on one, and then I decided to pop up the second hill with um, foam tape and it just gives it a little bit of extra dimension. I think it makes it a look a little bit more lifelike. Something else I did off camera, I'm not sure if you'll see it or not. I also went through and sanded the top of that. Here we go. Sanded the top of this just so those um, embossed little cascading dots actually came to life and looked a little bit more like snow.
Okay, so now you'll see me putting the other hill on the front with the foam tape to give it some dimension. And I had to allow for this extra layer when I was layering on the next few images, so some of them had to have foam tape over them as well. And just trimming them off so it's even with the card. So I thought this little banner resembled a sled a little bit. Um, so I decided to trim off some of the edges and cut it out so it looked like a sled. And then part of the banner I cut off and then put underneath another section. I just kind of played with it till it looked to me enough like a sled that nobody would really ask any questions. <laughs> and um, I think I pulled it off. I think it'll work. So both the sled and the gnome, I ended up coloring off camera, but um, I didn't really want to concentrate on any of those techniques today. But you'll see here, I'm piecing the sled together and then I colored it with my Spectrum Noir markers, the Triblin markers. I used a couple different shades of brown. What you don't see on camera is I did go and add a little bit of shimmer brush to the bows on the presents and to the beard and mustache of my Santa after I was finished coloring and putting everything on the front of the card. Now for the inside of the card, I took a piece of our mix-in paper pack and the piece is four by 12 and it scored at five, six, and seven inches. I centered up that smallest stitched bracket at the six inch mark. I centered it around six inches and cut it out and then folded that together so that it would pop up in the center of the card. The largest stitch bracket is what I cut out of white cardstock so that you could write a sentiment to the inside of the card as well. And here's the finished card. I added a little puff ball to the top of the Santa hat too. That was just something that was in my crafty stash. I hope that you enjoyed watching today's video and that you will like, subscribe, and then hit the bell so that you can turn on the notifications every time I record a video and upload it to YouTube. And also make sure you leave a comment and share this video with some of your crafty friends. And come back tomorrow for day eight. Angie will be sharing with you a special project.